Welcome back, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. Today we're going to talk about Ultimate Spider-Man! Yeah, we're not going to wait nearly as long as we normally do. Yeah. Volume yeah. 7. Uh, this one is called Irresponsible. It involves Spider-Man and, if you can imagine, the X-Men. Oh. Ultimate X-Men, that is. So it was Irresponsible crossing over the two franchises? No, it was actually a really good idea. To catch you up, the last story we did was, was Venom. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man meets one of the last pieces of his childhood and then seemingly kills it. And uh, he also loses his suit because he replaced it with the symbiote, the suit as they refer to it. Mary Jane used to make the suits and as you recall, uh, he and Mary Jane have broken up. So yeah. now he doesn't know what to do. Whoops. So he's Spider-Man with no suits. He's taking a lot of Peter suit. Parker. Yeah. Hey MJ, uh, I know you're not talking to me right now, right. but I really need to see this. Yeah. Uh, what what happened thing? to your old suit? Uh, I replaced it with a cooler looking one. Oh, what happened to that one? I murdered it. Uh, apparently it was alive. <laughs> yeah. And it wanted to eat me or other people. And your suits that you make, uh, don't want to do that. So if you make the other one. She's like, no problem. She makes one. She's like, she cuts the ass out. <laughs> She's like, there you go. <laughs> oh, I can't use this. Why not? Oh, well, my ass would be showing. Well, then everyone also, would get an idea about who you are. Also, it has my I'm name on the there. back of it. I'm Peter Parker. <laughs> Why would you stitch that in? I don't know. Don't ask your ex-girlfriends to make your clothes. On the front it says Spooderman. <laughs> it's not even right. I don't even know what that is. You'll so, find out. <laughs> so Spider-Man, uh, he goes to a costume shop. Oh. And he's like asking him for like a leotard. And he's like, you mean like this? And he's like, those are overalls. I mean like like a whole piece. It's like one one thing. And the guy's like, well, this is a wrestling thong, which is what you asked for. So he's like, no, nah, but like... I need like one piece. It's like red and blue. And has a web and right, a spider icon. Right, he's trying really like hard to like... spider icon. Yeah. And he goes, uh, you're talking about tights. Those are tights. And I don't sell tights. And he's like, no, but like wrestlers wear them. You know, like, like remember Spider-Man? And he's like, no. <laughs> and he's like, do, do you think you could like order something like that? And he's like, no. He's like, <laughs> okay. I'm in uh... trouble. <laughs> So then we see him in class and he's just sitting there pretexting, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. So oh, this is wow. how the plot point happens. Uh, because he's sitting there and he looks like just, just distraught because he just killed Eddie. Yeah. And he has no costume, so he can't even like fulfill the power responsibility thing that he's obsessed with. And like he lost a, a part of his history. Yeah, his, exactly. Folks. So he's just kind of like, do like zoning out and then... Uh, Mary Jane uh, clears her throat and he like, looks over and she wrote, what's the matter in her notebook? And she like holds it up. Oh. And so he writes in his notebook and they kind of like do this like back and forth. Yeah. Or if like the teacher, you know, forced you to put your phones away. Right. Whatever. Then you might do that. And in fact, I'm sure they do. Yeah. But, uh, but he wrote, he writes, what do you care? Oh my God. Because he's a guy <laughs> and you know, he's a teenager. And, and he's upset apparently. Yeah. And she wrote, Jesus. she wrote, I care. Oh. And he wrote, well, <laughs> And he goes, uh, well, which is it? You can't have it both ways. What? Because, you know. Oh, she says, I can't care. Oh, yeah. I yeah. can't care? <laughs> he said, I care. I, I was like, Luke, like, Luke Skywalker says, yeah, I care. I care. <laughs> no. So then. But uh, she broke up with him. Right. And, but she's That's still true. saying that she cares. So he's upset. Okay, exactly. I that. Exactly. So then she's like, I can't care. He goes, well, if you care, then why can't we be together? Oh. It's like. <sighs> all right. Maybe pump the brakes a little, Parker. <laughs> Jesus. So then... No, I don't understand why we're just not together. Right. I see you're hungry. Do you want half of my sandwich? Well, I mean... Whoa! Why so would you I ask can have me that? a sandwich, but we can't be together? Uh, I thought you were hungry because you didn't bring your lunch today. Holy crap. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> what? Dial it back. <laughs> so it's cute uh, because but they're having this back and forth. And then the, the teacher just grabs both of their notebooks. And she goes, let's have a look at what oh, these two are no. working on that's more important than class. Mary Jane asks Peter, what's the matter? And then Peter says, what do you care? And then Mary Jane says, oh, I can't care. And it's a says, nightmare. And Mary Jane, which is it? Why can't they be together? <laughs> That's fucking awesome. And they're just like... <laughs> yeah, they're mortified. And yeah. Gwen's like, oh, dude. This, this is, is epic. Eat popcorn. I'm enjoying the hell out of this. <laughs> so Peter's like, all right, well, that's my life now. Mm -hmm. So then he takes a break from class and goes and calls 
the wrestling company that hired him as Spider-Man. Oh. And they're like, yeah, this is this is the group. And he's like, yeah, hey, uh, I'm, I'm from Hasbro, the, uh, the toy company. And uh, we saw your Spider-Man character from a little while ago. And they're like, that was like decades ago. And he's like, <laughs> in, and in relative sense. Right. Yeah. It was really like... In wrestling years, that was decades exactly. ago. Exactly. And he's like, uh, well, well, listen, that Spider-Man guy was pretty interesting. And he's like, yeah, well, we make our toys from Toy Biz, which is funny because that's who worked with Marvel at that time. Uh, so, but it was just, yeah, we have, we, have a con- we have a contract with them already. And he's like, yeah, but that Spider-Man guy was pretty cool. And they're like, why do you care? What? Who? So? I'm just a fan of Spider-Man. Yeah, and he goes, well, listen, that was a cool outfit he had. You, you know where we could get some of those? And you guys like, click? <laughs> no. <laughs> just, what? No. So Peter t- gets off the phone with the wrestling guy, and then Flash Thompson, resident bully and tormentor of his entire life, shows up. Mm-hmm. And he goes, hey, do you have a minute? <laughs> and Peter's like, what? Why? <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you want? And he's like, look, I, I just want to talk to you, like, over there, like, away from everybody. And he's like, oh, yeah? Away from everybody? Why? So that you can, like, give me a wedgie or, like, drop some kind of blood on me or, you know, throw me into a garbage dumpster or something. Like, he just goes, I got a good idea. Why don't you crawl up your own nose and look for what's left of your retarded self-worth, you jackass? <laughs> wow. Brutal. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> and then uh, Kong, his friend, shows up and he's like, hey, what's going on? And he's like, nothing. I'm like, oh, something's mm. going on with Flash Thompson. Yeah. We never find out what it is. What? No? Yeah. Fuck you. I know. That sucks. I think, and I think the subtext is that he's interested in Gwen. And he knows that Peter's friends oh. with her. And he wants to know more about her. We never get closure on that. That sucks. But it's an interesting idea for Flash where he's like, he's so much of a douche. He has no idea... Like, that, the actions he has taken over the years would lead <laughs> right. to no one trusting him. Well, right. that they there's have no consequences. Con- yeah, there's right. no consequences. What? Yeah, what? Why no. is everyone such a dick to me? Oh, exactly. Like, like this- listen to the thing. I'm awesome in this school. People love me. Yeah, yeah, like, and normally I am a dick to you, but, like, obviously I'm not right now, so obviously yeah, you I'm being nice to you me. right now. Yeah. What's the problem? This guy never really gets any he better. He never gets it. He never gets it. He doesn't get worse nor does he become like a villain mm-hmm. or get powers or anything. He just he just doesn't ever learn. That was my concern. Is yeah. That he was suddenly be like, look, can I talk to you for over here for a minute? Right, and then Peter's a jerk and he's like, oh, that's it. I hate Peter Parker. <laughs> like, no, not even that. But I figured he would like, he's like, look, something weird happened the other night. Oh, I, I got I'm powers. Mu- I yeah. think I'm a mutant. Yeah. I mean, that could be it. But That'd be cool. he had the lamest power because we never see it in action. <laughs> but uh, my, my power is... Uh, I suddenly realized what a jackass is. <laughs> yeah, I have self-reflection. I'm the mirror. I'm called hindsight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, then we cut to an alley where a lady's being shaken down by a bunch of bad guys, and then oh. Spider-Man shows up. Yay. In his great outfit of his pants and a sweater with a spider drawn on it, and his Spider-Man mask. Oh, so well, he at least he's got his mask. He still has the mask, okay. but nothing else. And his webs. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. And they're just like looking at him like, what? What is this? What happened, man? And he's like, I'm Spider-Man. And they're like, what happened to your costume? And he goes, your mom's washing it for me. <laughs> Yay! That's great. Nice. You know what? I have had a shit day. <laughs> I'm not taking any crap from and you. The, his crew is like, oh! <laughs> Do they get behind Spider-Man and like, what? They're literally, oh, damn! <laughs> That's awesome. So Spider-Man kicks their ass and he webs them all together. Uh-huh. And he's like talking to the lady and he's trying to calm her down. And she's like, is one of your lenses supposed to be in your face? And he realizes that, like, one of the lens popped out. Oh, no. And he's like, oh, man. Jeez. Even the part of my costume that's original yeah. is, like, breaking. And this is the kind of Spider-Man stuff. This is my lowest moment. Yeah. As a, as a superhero, anyway. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, people who write Spider-Man are like, Spider-Man is a perpetual loser. You know, he always is on down his luck. He's having mm. a hard time. So he's you know, late. He's got he's late for appointments. He's he's got girl troubles. You know, he's got a zit. He's got all these problems, and it's like, yeah, no, he has conquerable problems, <laughs> not like man baby problems, where he is he he is a saboteur of his own life. Like, no, this is a guy who his costume's missing, and he's a fifteen year old, and he's trying everything he can, but he doesn't have a replacement. He has no idea how to do it. So, like, he has to learn how to sew, I guess. You know, like, there's, there's work that needs to be done. Well, but it's not, like, a character flaw. Right. It's just fun. Yeah. At least... And relatable. Yes! 
At least he's not like some kind of really. asshole. Right, which is no. which could be relatable for people like Flash Thompson. Well, yeah. But I don't think that they have the hindsight to look past this book and actually see that, you know, that's a, that's an allegory character for themselves. What were you going to say? <laughs> I was going to joke that, like, the lens pops out and then she's like, hey, is, is that supposed to happen? He's like, oh, and then he farts and he's like... <laughs> Yeah. Like, everything is going everything wrong. Everything goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> obviously, it killed on the couch. That's a, that's a good moment. that should have worked in the book. I don't know how you, how you illustrate that. I've only seen farts in comics done to great Beavis and Butthead-esque comedic effect. You know, like, there's, like, a mushroom cloud of yeah. green that shoots out of their butts. Yeah. Or their power is flatulence. And so they, like, blast buildings apart. Uh I think if you just had a TBBT or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, Toot. And yeah. the, pan- the next panel is just, just dead Nothing. silence. <laughs> yep. And Spider-Man, because we have the missing lens, he just... He gets a little red, and then she just goes, did you fart? Yeah. Or no, he says, was that you? <laughs> just his lowest moment, he blames it on her. It's he obvious. He blames the gang members. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of them. Or the gang members just laugh. Yeah. Yep. That... <laughs> Yep. As it stands, the scene works on its own. Anyway, so Peter's but with that fart in there, that oh, would have been gold. That's that's the extra little, the, that little bit, a little button on the scene. Missed opportunity. I know. Agreed. Damn it, Bendis. So Peter's working on his suit, and then he hears uh, Gwen knock on the door because she's living at the house. Yeah. Well. And he's like, "Ah, oh, crap!" He just grabs everything, throws it into a trunk. Uh, don't come in. Yeah. No, I'm masturbating. <laughs> Great! Hey. Now Gwen thinks I'm a chronic <laughs> masturbator. That's hey. what I come up with. I masturbating. I can't think of anything else. Yeah. No, it's perfect. Fart. That's just like, what are you looking at? Um, <laughs> porn. Damn it! Yeah. It's like Spider-Man Homecoming. Well, yeah. yeah, porn. That would have been. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. All right. So anyway, she's, she's like, yeah. So uh, I need to get stuff out of my trunk. What? Your trunk? Yeah. yeah. Oh no! Humana, humana, humana. Don't open it. I was. I keep my porn in there. You masturbate to Oh, fabric? yeah? Let me check it out. No, t- what? <laughs> okay, that's an entirely different story. <laughs> yeah, then he distracts her by hooking up with her. Yeah. Anyway, so she comes down there and she's like, listen, it's Friday night. What are you doing? And he's like, what are you doing? Yeah, and he's like, what are you doing? She's like, we're losers. We should be going to parties. And he's like, I don't like parties. Parties are lame. I like hanging out and playing video games and like, you know, being Spider-Man. That's, all, that's you know, this is and what, what I do. I, 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 I'm masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> and she, you know, she's like, right on, I'm, I'm down. But, uh, but she's like, no, we should be doing stuff. We're young, we're single, we should be going out and having a good time. He's like, this is, no, no parties are not fun, trust me. <laughs> like, they're totally lame. And if you recall, like, the first time you went out to a party, that's yeah. like kind of the night that Uncle Ben died. Mm. So, you know, but she's like, no, we are going to a party. And he's like, fine. So they go to this party, and I love how it's illustrated because, yeah, it's totally lame. Yeah. It's someone's living room, choked with people, some people are arguing, clicks are talking to each other, and that's it. Some people are watching TV. It's probably music. It's, I'm definitely they don't show music. it. No, thankfully, I actually really appreciate it because you can just you can just project just whatever yeah. whatever party you've been to. That's the party this is. And Peter and Gwen are just sitting away from it. Yeah, because they're like because oh. they're like oh, and no one's gonna like invite us to dance, you know, yeah. or like race for pinks or whatever kids do. So, <laughs> not that. <laughs> Especially at a house party. So he goes. Were they yeah. invited? Well, this, they were aware she, like, that not friends a... with anybody. The point no, they're is, both is that not friends you just yeah. crash. Yeah, you oh, there. there's a party there. This is a party, by the way, at, a, at another school's kids' place. Oh, okay. So it's not even people they know. How, how did they she even know? Did they oh, drive around? No, because, because, the other, for music. because the other kids at their school were talking about the oh. other school having a party. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. As it works, apparently, because you're yeah. also they're, they go to school in New York, so it's like they're, sure. they're all it's everywhere. It's party all the yeah. time. So he's like, "I'm gonna go," and she's like, "You can't just leave me here. We gotta go together." And then Mary Jane and Liz Allen walk in the room dressed like this. She changed her hair. Yeah. Wow. Because she's a totally different person now. Yeah. Jesus. Wait, that's Mary Jane in the black hair? Yeah. That's oh, madness. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Yeah. Also, that's like a bondage top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she probably got it at the Hot Topic. Yep. So they, so Peter and she like catch eyes, and then she, like Mary Jane looks at her and like, oh, and then Liz is like, let's go, Mary Jane, and just pushes her out of the way, and then Gwen goes, well, that worked. He's like, what worked? And she's, she's like, she got your attention. Mm. And you're like, oh. And How'd like, she know he was going to be there? Yeah. I mean, 
<laughs> even if she wasn't, the next day at school, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, I guess. So the, on Monday, on I'm Monday every, like, did you see what Mary Jane was wearing? Exactly. Maybe that was the plan. Maybe and he wasn't supposed to see her. Yeah, I'm sure she was not expecting to see him there. Mm. So uh, he's like, "Can we go now?" Because I'm mm. like miserable. And she's like, "Yeah, absolutely, we can go." And then they hear an explosion outside. Oh shit! And the chanting of the name Geldof. I have to pause for a moment because <laughs> Bendis talked up Geldof as like the breakout new character he was inventing. Geldof. Geldof. And it was, of course, a big tongue-in-cheek moment. He knew that, like, the comic book news outlets would all talk about Geldof and go, Who's Geldof? What are his powers? Who is Gabbo? Who is Gabbo? <laughs> and then you meet him and he's just a plot device. He's just, he, he's so stupid. He just sucks. Geldof sucks. So, Geldof's outside. Geldof sucks, much like his name. Yeah. <laughs> Apologies to all our Geldofs out there. So, uh, Geldof has a mutant ability to blow up cars or to blow up things from uh, the I was going to say, just cars? Just cars, though. So he's blowing shit up, and they're just chanting Geldof, and Peter's like, holy crap. Is it just at the party? Just at the party, yeah. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, well, because, like, that's the superhero equivalent of someone taking it too far at a party. Yep. Let's let's throw cherry bombs in the toilet, or, yep. you know, Let's like, throw a pro- propane canister in the bonfire. Right. <laughs> like, know, I, ever, why would anyone why would do that? I don't know anyone who's ever told a story Something like that. Something that's never come up in real life no. ever. So but blowing up cars? Yeah. That's a little extreme. That's it is. That's incredibly extreme. Yeah, but Geldof's really popular, and... Incredibly yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, that's about to make him very unpopular. Yes, because yeah. the cops arrive, and everyone's like, we gotta go! So the cops show up, and, of course, like every, everybody just runs out the back door. Yep. Cops show, freeze! Boom! <laughs> They never freeze! Why is every it? Every time! Steve, why is it every time you go freeze? Why do you use the sirens? We gotta kick the door down, man. We, we should just know we're coming. We should have just rolled up, all quiet like. You know, if we ever see a movie called Super Troopers, we gotta do that thing where we bring the keg. Yes. And then bust them. And then bust them. Although I think that's entrapment, but whatever. So they all bail. No, not and... unless they ask if you're cops. Oh, I you know, I think that's bullshit. <laughs> I've heard that too. Where it's like, you, you, it's legal. You gotta tell me if you're a cop or not. I don't think they have to. Because I remember asking it like, a, I think I remember asking a dare officer one time. And he's like, oh no, we can lie. <laughs> I'm like, really? Oh yeah, we lie all the time. Yeah, I'm lying to you right now. So Peter's like, hey Mary Jane, let's get out of here. Yeah. Well, he. Well, they all try to leave, and so they're all like jumping over fences and stuff, and mm-hmm. they're just desperately trying to get out. And it's just, it's just Peter and Gwen and Liz and MJ. And they're getting out of there, and Peter's like helping everybody over. This is a cute moment where Gwen's like, "Come on, Peter, you can do it! Climb the wall!" And Peter's like, "Yeah." <laughs> so then they do, and they just they just run as far and as fast as they can to like a bus stop where they can just have plausible deniability. Right. Oh, we're just hanging out at this bus yeah, stop. We're just hanging out, dressed like we're go- we're going to a party. We're going home. We're going home. Why? why? So oh, did so, something did something happen at that party? Yeah. So they're we're all gonna have out. a bus party. Well, you don't you don't do that. You don't have, you just get on a bus and then like yeah. And then just woo. Woo. Hey. Ralph, can you turn up the music? <laughs> Saturday night's all right, all right. So it actually wouldn't be too bad on a bus, right? Yeah, uh, no, a, par- a party bus. I think that's a thing. So pe- I mean, that, a party bus is the bus that drives you to the party and then home from. The I've party heard of when a party bus drunk. where you. Oh yeah, but you could hire a bus, a party bus. Yeah, that shows and up you and have like, a party in the yeah. bus. So the kids are all talking about like what happened, and they're like, "Who was that kid?" And there's a couple of chicks who are at the party who go to their school. These names Gildo- Geldof? Yeah. And they're I like, I might have heard it chanted a hundred times. <laughs> yeah, basically. And they're like, yeah, it's Geldof. He's a transfer student from our school. He's like European or something. And they're like, oh, they were saying Geldof? I European. thought it was Dolph Gel. Dolph Gel. Dolph Gel. Because it was one continuous chain of yeah. words. Yeah. Right? I, I came in at the wrong time. <laughs> so they're like, we have to go. Like, I, and Mary Jane is freaked out. She's like, if my father sees me in this outfit. He will literally kill me. What There's was your no plan? Way. Was she going to change? Yeah, she was going to sneak in. She probably changed. She, you sure changed she, at a friend's house. I think she changed yeah. at Liz's house, yeah. where her parents well, are way more lax. Still do that. Why yeah. she do that? Well, because it's really late now. Oh. I don't know. Oh, now it's really late? The party got busted up, but now they it's really They were running late. for like two hours. I know, I know. It doesn't matter. Point is... One of their cars got blown up, obviously. Yeah, the point is, <laughs> they get Yikes. on the bus. Okay. And so oh, they're ever, actually taking the bus. They do, oh no, they're oh, literally oh. taking the bus. So they all hang out in the bus, and they're all just like, kind of like, taking it all in. Mm-hmm. And so uh, Peter looks over at Mary Jane, and she like indicates to sit next to her. And he's like, dress like that? Hell yeah! So <laughs> then he sits next to her, and they're talking, and she goes, I can't believe that you're like hanging out with us right now. Like, why didn't you just like to put on your costume and leave? Because you're Spider Man. Oh right. And he's like, I kind of lost it. And she's like, Oh my god. Peter, what is wrong with you? And he's like, yeah, oh, everything, basically. Bam. I'm just a mess. <laughs> no! 
not again. I need to see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a real problem. What did you have for lunch today? Ah, uh, like three visits to Taco Bell. Yeah. Okay, maybe I don't need to see a doctor. <laughs> yeah, I think you just need to see a nutritionist. So Peter is like talking about how uh, he's he's just completely swept up in how she looks. He's like, wow, like you look amazing. She's like, I look stupid. This is this is not me. Like I was just, I, mean, I, I don't it, know it what it could I was, be. I mean, let's that's fine. Right now it is. It could be you privately. Uh, if you don't want this to be you, that's fine. But could I date not you? Right. Like, yeah. Since you don't want to go out with me, maybe the other you is interesting. <laughs> so this, this is just working. The most desperate <laughs> Peter Parker in the world. Yep. So uh, anyway, they're talking about how she's mm. like, I'm going through some changes. I'm trying to figure out myself and blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, okay, listen. I have this letter that I wrote you. But you have to oh. promise not to read it until you're home. He's like, okay. Sure. So then he takes the note and he takes the note and they all, by the way, the bus arrives, they get dropped off and they're all just like going. Yeah, they're dropped off in their neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, so she gives him the note and then she and Liz leave and then Gwen says, well, what was all that about? And he's like, she, she gave me a note. She's like, let's read it. And he's like, no, no. Like I promised her I'd read it when I get home. And she goes, that's fine. I know what it says anyway. What? Like, because I'm a chick. I know, oh, I know right. What this is. I yeah. know what this means. Yeah. yeah. And he's no, like, it just says "fuck you" in giant letters. Right. <laughs> so she, he reads the note, and basically the note, which is cute, because it's written in like kind of like a handwriting. Uh huh. Uh, but it basically says, "I'm in love with you, and I've loved you forever. And if you promise that I won't get thrown off any buildings anymore, we can get back together." Oh God. Uh, yeah, put me between a rock and a hard place here, Mary Jane. I mean, like, listen, I'm Spider Man, all right? So he gleefully leaps out of the basement, runs over and to her says place. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah, I promise. Yeah, of Nothing course. bad will ever happen to you. Yep. So they so then they make out. Yay. And they get back okay, to Okay, that's right. not what the letter said. He, it should have just been, I promise you'll never get thrown off any tall buildings. Right. Yeah. Specifically that. It's yeah. probably not going to happen. Okay, to be fair, you didn't get tossed off a tall building. You got tossed off a tall bridge. Yes. Which, by the way, building. Uh, she does get, like, totally messed up in a later story. Of course. By a villain. Yeah. Because he's Spider-Man. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. That's that's how this works. Yeah, but by that point, they'd already... They break up a couple more times, oh I think. Oh, my God. So, yeah, it's high school. Yeah. The 15. Yeah. So, uh, Peter goes to school, and somebody has written on the lockers, Geldof Rules. And Peter has this hilarious internal monologue where he's like, he rules? First of all, how does he rule? He rules what? Well, he rules the school. Right? Like, what school? He doesn't even go to the school. I don't even know who Geldof is. <laughs> this is so stupid. Well, he you know, blows like, up cars. And right. Word so gets out. So I guess out. he rules. And he's like, well, who cares? My Some kid named O'Doyle comes along. Hey! Yeah, what? Step out of my I turf. Rule. So. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's totally normal. Painting people's rule on lockers mm -hmm. at a different school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's probably nothing to be worried about. Yeah. I've never had that happen in my high school. And then Flash shows up and he's like, hey, what's going on? Uh, I really need to talk to you about something really important. Get out of here, Flash! Yeah. And, bam, Mary bam, Jane's bam, like, bam. Bam. and Mary Jane's like, what is this all about? Like, they're talking about him like he's not there. She's like, what is this all about? What's Flash doing? He's like, Flash is being weird and I don't know why. He just won't leave us alone. I think he wants to like sneak off and make me go someplace private so he can like torture me like he does every day. And she's like, hmm, good to know. Hey Flash, screw off. You know, like oh, you suck. And he's yeah. like, fine. You guys will get me. And he leaves. Cool. And they're like, what is, why is he such a moody little girl? Yeah. And he's like, I do not care. And we don't find out why. And there's no more closure about this. Jesus. Book. So he just leaves. I'm amazed it got brought up again. Yeah. yeah. Right? I know. Well, because when he was writing this book, he had an idea. Yeah. And then he was happen. like, oh, like, oh right. Ah, I got other things to talk about. So this is the point where you're reading this and when there's no closure, you're like, so those parts, he was high. <laughs> he was like, I just, I got to get through this story. I got to make some I, stuff. Yeah. I got to do oh, things. Oh, I thought you were like, he just a, has this great idea. He's like, ah, oh, and then like, Volume 19 is just going to be all about Flash. It's gonna People are going to be like begging me to make Flash the new Spider-Man. Yeah, what's going to happen is like Spider-Man's going to die, right? And then Flash, Flash, like takes over. Yeah. And then Flash, and... I'll figure it out. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm hanging up Chekhov's guns. <laughs> Trust me, these are happening. So, Peter, uh, so anyway, uh, Liz gets a phone call from her friend at the school that Geldof goes to. Uh huh. And Gel's blowing up cars at their school. Jesus. And there's just like screams and everybody's freaking out. <sighs> so Mary Jane's like, You gotta go. You gotta be Spider Man. He's like, But I don't have my costume. She's like, That's okay. 
I'm almost done making yours. So put on <laughs> what I've got. It's everything except the hole for the butt. Right. <laughs> because I was kind of mad at you at the time. Uh, no, she puts on this costume. It's not tailored yet. Oh. So it's just this big, <laughs> long shirt. It's loose and there are no pants. Yeah, and there's no pants. And I love her looking at him because she goes, Yee! Like, you <laughs> look amazing. Lee stupid. <laughs> and he's like, all right. Well, I it's guess something. <laughs> I'll go. So then he swings over to the other school and Geldof has like, got his cheering section. Everybody's like chanting for Geldof. Uh, yeah. And he's like, Jesus. hey, stop. And they're like, who are you supposed to be? And he's like, I'm Spider-Man. And like, I'm Spider-Man, everybody. Just stop. Yeah, well, I'm Geldof. Yeah. And he's Geldof, like, Geldof, Geldof rules. rules. Geldof rules. So hey, he, so he, do you have any red paint? Knock it off. Yeah, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. You got red on your hands. My principal wants to talk to you. So he webs Geldof's hands because he seems to be using his hands to like manipulate his powers. Okay. Right. And he's like, stop. And then Geldof uses this his This is powers. Geldof? Yeah. Oh, oh, you didn't see Geldof with his Jeez. long, beautiful Fabio-esque yeah. hair? By the way, he also is, has phonetic speaking, so he's like, what is this? Like, he has, like, some kind of Eastern European accent. Yeah. Oh, so Geldof is, like, it's, some kind of yeah, Eastern European name. Yes. Right. No, yeah. my parents named me Geldof. They're big D&D fans. Well, they, yeah, or they named me after my great-grandfather, you know, from the old country. I don't know why we're ragging on Geldof. It's uh, the name. It's just a stupid name. That's all. <laughs> It's just that everyone named Geldof sucks, that's all. It's just, uh, it's just I the have name it on that I hate. Point, uh, that right. he rules. Yeah, I d yeah point, counterpoint. Uh, okay, he sucks. I have here actual citations that... That's dozens of people... He rules. ...claim otherwise. Right. Your retort. Uh, there's well, actually a cheering section. Done. Yeah, and he has, he, has a, he has an entourage. Point conceded. Ha-ha! Ha-ha, uh -huh, Geldof rules. Geldof. So... The cops show up, and Spider-Man's like, oh, I gotta go, because the cops want to, like, shoot me all the time. Anyway, knock off all the all the car blowing up. You're going to jail. <laughs> and then Gil's like, take me with you. I can't go to jail. Spider-Man's like, no. So he swings away. <laughs> but as he tries to leave, Gil grabs onto his loose-fitting costume. And so he's just, like, pulling Gil off. And so he's got to, like, barely keep it together. So now they're mid-air. Uh -huh. He's like, okay, I guess I gotta take him with me, because he's gonna fall. So yep. he catches Gil off, brings him onto a roof. And they have a heart-to-heart -heart where basically Spider-Man's like, so explain to me how your powers work and blah, blah, blah. Like, who are you? you know, he's trying to like get to know him and, yeah. and talk him down so that he gives himself up because he still believes that the authorities are like not just going to cut him open and use him. Right, for so, some reason. Right, but he's like, you have amazing abilities and you should use them responsibly, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Power and responsibility. Great power of husband. Yep. So Peter hears uh, the ringing of an alarm across the street. There's a bodega being robbed. So mm -hmm. Spider-Man's like, I gotta go. Watch what I do. Don't See, help me. This is what I'm talking about. Right. See, there's a thing. I've gotta go. I have to do this. You're not in any way equipped to do this. Do not follow me. So then yeah. he goes and Blowing he, things up will not help us right now. Right. <laughs> so he jumps in and there's, it's being robbed by a couple people in hilarious metatextual superhero masks. <laughs> Some of them are wearing Captain America Marvel stuff, but there's also a dude in a Batman mask That's because, fucking awesome. because Marvel DC relations were a little better back then. Spider-Man tries to stop the problem. Uh, he seems to have everything well in hand, and then the front built part of the bodega just explodes. Great. What? Good job. Did I say? Yeah. So, like, every everything's on fire, and I love how it's portrayed. It's just a nightmare. Broken glass, fire, uh, you know, structural integrity of the building's kind of compromised. And there the, was a car out there. Yeah. The owner is injured. You know, the people who he mm -hmm. stopped are also injured, and he just makes sure everybody's not dead. And then he immediately goes and meets back up with Geldof, and he just backhands him. He's like, well, nice. what is the matter with you? Uh, I helped. Uh, that was their getaway car. Yeah. And he's like, no, that is not helping. <laughs> and then, and he, so he's like, he's yelling at Geldof, and then Geldof goes, well, how about I just explode you from the inside like I do those cars? Oh. And that stops him right in his tracks, because you're like, yeah, if you can just blow things up, I guess you can blow people up. Yikes. And Geldof's like, yeah, I've never tried it before, but maybe I will. Maybe step off. Right. And Spider-Man's like, oh, shit. So okay, the, great power. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> man. He, he's he's, he's kind of stuck. And then the X-Men arrive. Or at least three of the hottest. Uh, Describe, Self-described as the hey, cute ones. the cute ones. We heard that uh, Geldof rule. <laughs> <laughs> so Kitty Pride, uh, Jean Grey, and Storm show up along with the Blackbird. And they're like, Blackbird looks real weird. Yeah, well, because yeah. they're they're trying a thing. It's ultimate. Yeah. 
So oh, Tron-esque. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, Spider-Man goes on an adventure with the X-Men. And meanwhile, in Peter Parker's life, things are really, really complicated. Uh, are we seeing his life happen simultaneously? Yes. Or is he we're, just not there? He's it's not there. Class. We're seeing like what happens when Peter Parker just leaves and bees, and is Spider-Man. Yeah. So... Spider-Man meets up with the X-Men, and the X-Men show up, and they're like, hey, like, so, yeah, we're looking for Geldof, because we heard that there was a mutant in the area, and it's great, because Spider-Man says something like, I told you you were a mutant. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Geldof basically faints, because he sees these beautiful X-Men, and also and the X-Men are kind of All the like, blood rushes out of his head. Oh, right, yeah. naturally. And he passes out, and they're like, huh. So then Spider-Man and the X-Men have like a little, a little back and forth, where mm-hmm. they're like, you know... Apparently, Kitty Pride is a huge Spider-Man fan. Nice. One she of has a says, poster. She has a poster in her room. <laughs> Spider-Man's like, who sells posters of me? Where, where do I get the residuals from those posters? But they're talking about stuff, and uh, and Jean is talking in Peter Parker's head, because that's how she normally communicates, I guess. But she's like, hey, so I want to let you know, like, you did a really, really good job. Like, you, I know that the building exploded, but, like, you tried everything you could, and mm-hmm. it's really cool. That you tried a non-violent solution. That's kind of what we're all about. Like, X-Men being superheroes, like, or fighting, it's the last resort. We're trying to find a diplomatic solution. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's great. Can we talk with our mouths? Yeah, and he's <laughs> freaking out, and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, is this making you uncomfortable? I've, I've been in your mind, and you're kind of like the first person who's not pictured me naked immediately within talking to me. <laughs> and he's like, oh. And she's like, until now? I mean, you said it. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And she's like, and he's like, I'll stop. And there's just this great sequence of panels where he's trying to stop thinking of her naked, but can't. And her face just keeps getting more and more progressively like, are you serious? Like, stop. And it's like, just turn, just stop reading his mind. Yeah, get out of his fucking also, mind. Also, like, it's not you cool. put the thought in my head. Yeah. yeah don't picture me it. naked. What? I, I, Damn it. But, how could you do that? What, me? What a violation. <laughs> get out of my mind. <laughs> So she like gets off on like people picturing her she's naked. She's like, oh no, you didn't picture me naked. I like that. You have a little and bit of resolve. And she gets all mad. Yeah. So. Oh, you better stop. Yep. You better stop picturing me naked. He's like, what? <laughs> Wait, are you? I tried to you stop. Off on this? Now I can't. What? Are you no. projecting are you... <laughs> your <laughs> nakedness into my no, head? No, stop. It's different what? from what I pictured. So I'm thinking maybe that's more accurate. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Professor X reaches out to all of them, and including Spider-Man. He's mm-hmm. like, "Hi!" He even does a Charlie's Angels joke, which is like timely. And, well, uh, I guess they all. That's a <laughs> redhead blonde brunette. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, good morning, morning angels. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so Spider-Man's like, "Whoa!" Oh, Jesus. So he's like, "Listen, bring Geldof and put him in the Blackbird and take him to the mansion." And Spider-Man's like, "Hey, so Professor Xavier," uh, and they're like, "He's not. He's not here anymore." He, he already left. And they're like, he's like, oh, that's cool. Well, anyway, uh, have a good time with your, you know, with your get with with your kidnapping, and uh, I'm gonna go. And they're like, you want to come? And he's like, yeah. yes, yeah, I do want to go. And Kitty Pride's like, oh, it's gonna be great. You're gonna have a great time. And he's do you like, have a marker? Yeah, and I got a marker. Right? I'm gonna have you sign my poster. But it's cute because the Kitty, you could tell, is really into him. Mm-hmm. She's got little cartoon hearts around her face. Uh, but Spider-Man's like, yeah, it'll be fun. I'll, I'll come. So that, he, That's not Gene projecting them. Right? I mean, it could be. <laughs> but Spider-Man goes with them. And meanwhile, uh, he's supposed to be in science class right now. Yeah. yeah. And his science teacher's like, so yeah, uh, uh, the only one who actually pays attention to my class is not here. Can so now I'm explain- just doing nothing. Yeah, now I'm just talking to nobody. So could please, someone please explain to me where Peter Parker is. And, uh, That's it. Everyone stop class. We have to hunt down Peter Parker. <laughs> right. Well, Peter... Uh, he's the most important one of you. Yeah, he's at least the one who's actually doing something <laughs> in this class. But Gwen and Mary Jane are in the class, and Gwen, and Peter's like... And, and Mary, so Gwen and Mary Jane are in the class, and Mary Jane's like, oh, I, I, think, uh, I think he has a stomach problem. And Gwen's like, no, he doesn't. What are you talking about? Uh, no, and Mary Jane's like, no, he does. Stomach yeah, because Gwen doesn't know he's Spider-Man. And she also hates Spider-Man and thinks that Spider-Man killed her father. Yeah. So... Right. Uh, Mary Jane's trying to keep the secret, and and then school gets canceled because there was basically an explosion at a nearby school. It's the Geldof situation, uh, yeah. And so they're just they're just canceling schools in the surrounding area because they don't know what it's, like they can't ascertain what the problem is. So they're just right. like, ah, school's canceled. All your parents have been called. So everybody goes outside, and there's this great interaction between Mary Jane and her mom, 
where we don't really get to see Mary Jane's mom much at all. Mm -hmm. But we do know that, like, Mary Jane's parents are going through a divorce and her dad is cheating on her. Mm. So her mom is, like, really aggressively, like, oh, Mary Jane, I'm so glad you're here. Like, oh, I'm glad you're okay. Mary Jane's like, there was nothing here. They're just canceling school because of what happened over there. And she's like, it's fine, Mom. And she's like, oh, my God, I'm not allowed to care about my daughter? What is going on here? And you're like, Let me write this down in a notebook. Yeah. I can't care. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, I'm totally my mother. Oh, yeah. My God. So, but it, by the way, like, it's, it's a realistic situation. Yeah. We don't really get to see that really resolved either, but it doesn't matter. But uh, then Aunt May shows up, and she's like, where's Peter? Mm -hmm. And Mary Jane's like, oh, he was just here. Uh, maybe he went... And Gwen's like, what are you talking about? He's He's been missing for the past, like, two hours. <laughs> he and wasn't here. So he, she's like, no, but he was just here. And Hitman goes, and where is he now? <laughs> like, I don't believe anything you're saying. Yeah. You're full of shit, Mary Jane. Yeah. So then Aunt May just whips out her phone. She's like, well, maybe he's at work. Let's call work together, Mary Jane. <laughs> and so she's calling the Daily Bugle and just harassing everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. That's really cool. So... <laughs> Geldof wakes up on the Blackbird, he uses his powers, blows up the Blackbird, everything yeah. goes to shit, everybody's just This falling. fucking guy! I know, oh my god! Well, they did kidnap him, I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly, but like, goddamn Geldof. Well, you passed out, I'm not gonna wait for you to wake up and then pass out again to be like, hey, can you... Yeah. You... They I'll try that, and he's you. just, yeah. Why doesn't Jean Grey go in his head and be like, and no, no, no stop. I don't know. You know, like, useless. paralyze him, maybe, right? she, maybe she doesn't have that power Do yet. Do anything. Yeah. What does she do? She talks to people's heads? Yeah, and she so has a useful. mild telekinetic power. Mild, that she doesn't use at all to stop this. She uses it to stabilize people. When the, when there's a hole in the ship, she tries to like, bre like kind oh. of seal the hole with her mind. Meanwhile, Storm creates like gale force winds to keep the Blackbird from just dropping like a stone. And gotcha. Kitty Pryde just faces out. She's like, no, I'm not dealing with this. Later! <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but Spider-Man grabs She grabs Spider-Man. She's like, no, you're coming with me. Let's go. <laughs> So, you know, Spider-Man, like, webs Geldof to the hall and grabs Kitty, and everything goes to shit, basically. Uh, Spider-Man, like, loses everything. He falls, and he's just gonna die. And ultimately, uh, Gwen, or ultimately, Jean, like, reaches out with her mind and, like, gr and grabs him and uses her telekinetic powers to keep him from dying. Okay. Uh, we don't see that until after they've already arrived at the Xavier Institute. Ah. And okay. Peter is uncostumed and demasked. Oh, shit. And all they know is his first name is Peter, but he's just sitting there, and the, the entire X-Men are there just, like, looking at him. Hey. By the way, he's... At first, he is in a dream, and he's just in this beautiful library, ostensibly in the Xavier Institute, but he's, mm -hmm. like, reading a book. And it's the book written by Ben Urich about the, the toppling of the Kingpin's empire. Okay. And uh. Professor X shows up, and he's like, hey, Peter, what are you reading? He's like, oh, it's this book that, like, my, my kind of, like, co-worker wrote, and I've been meaning to read it. Because I helped make it happen, and also I really, really care about this guy, but I've never had a chance to actually sit down and read for a few freaking minutes. And Xavier's like, yeah, that's cool and everything, but you need to wake up. So he wakes up, and he's there, and he's surrounded by X-Men. He's like, what happened? And then they tell him, like, <laughs> okay, everything went to shit, you were going to die, but we saved you, and now you're here. And he's like, this is insane. Like, you took off my mask. You brought me oh, to this This is place. insane. I can't believe this. So he's like, you know, is there anyone on this planet who doesn't know that I'm Peter Parker? And they're like, well, we didn't know your last name. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God. God damn it. Bam. I am the worst. <laughs> <laughs> How could this day get any worse? <laughs> Burr. And he's under a sheet. So it's <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I, I fart with the power of a spider, too. <laughs> Aunt May calls the bugle. They reroute her. They're like, oh, that's a different extension. They're just... Sending her everywhere. She uh -huh. gets nowhere. She goes to the like to to Peter's bedroom door. It's locked. She uses fire extinguisher and just breaks the door in. She's like, no, no more secrets. <laughs> if you're in here, I'm finding out. Yeah. I don't care if you're oh, masturbating. Exactly. Yeah. So she goes down there. It's empty. And remember, Peter dumped all this stuff into a trunk. Right. Before, so nothing's there except for like one of the uh, two-way mirror glass things. Right. Next to his computer, but she doesn't see it. Mm. Draws to go on his computer, doesn't know the password. She's like, nope. And so she's kind of run out of ideas yep. for how to break her <laughs> nephew's privacy. Yeah. Uh, but also, she's just worried about him. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I see uh, Peter's walking around in his mask and an X-Men t-shirt. Yeah, the suit got ripped and destroyed. Why so, is he still wearing the mask? Yeah, they already know who he is. Yeah, because... Oh, we just feel more comfortable with the mask on, please. Also, it's a school. There's, people, there's other people oh, there. Right. He's just talking to the inner circle. All right. But uh, they have Geldof hooked up to like a machine... Which is kind of like keeping him in stasis for a minute. Oh. He's awake, 
but he's also like sedated. Yeah, yeah, but he can't use his powers. They can't use his powers right now. Right. Uh, okay. So he doesn't blow everything up. And the Professor X is like talking about how Gelo's powers work. He's like, I don't know if he's a mutant or if he's like a, 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 like a like before you become a mutant, but then was experimented on because he's a mutant. Okay. So his powers might be man-made, but they experimented on him because he's a mutant. Right. And so like this is gonna be great. Like I'm actually gonna be able to like bring him to a couple of symposiums, and we're gonna like blow the lid on the fact that there are groups out there that are experimenting on mutants and stuff. And, like this could be the smoking gun we need. And Spider-Man's like, uh, he is the smoking gun you need. He he's a person. Right. You don't get to just kidnap people and then use them for your political motivation, like for your political agendas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this seems really not like Professor X. Well, it's well, it's, it's ultimate this... Professor X. Yeah, and also it's yeah, it's Professor. And also totally like Professor X. Yeah, <laughs> Professor X is a huge hypocrite. But uh, but he's like this this kid. Hey, he was blown off cars. Yeah, but like he's yeah, but he doesn't. He, he should be in jail right now. I saved him. Yes, but he also has powers he didn't ask for and doesn't understand. So maybe we can give him a little bit of leeway here. He's a teenager. You mean he's maybe like, we could train yeah. him? Right. Well, he's um, interesting. Um, no, I think I'm just going to use him as a puppet. Right. And he's like, this kid deserves the chance for a normal life. And Beast is like, define normal. And you're like, ugh. He punches Beast. He grabs Geldof. And then he just kicks Cyclops in the face and just starts making his way out of the mansion. And everyone's like, duh! <laughs> he barely makes it out of the mansion before he is stopped by Professor X. He's standing there and he's like, Peter, now what would this accomplish? Mm-hmm. And then we realize this is just the thought that Peter had. Oh. And he hasn't actually done it. <laughs> and Charles is like, listen, like, I know what you're thinking and I know what, you, what, you, what you're worried about. Like, you have to trust me. I'm not a monster. And I, I promise that we will do everything we can for this kid. And he's not going to be a puppet and all this stuff. That's weird. Yeah. I had this I, thought and I let it play out in your head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I interrupted you at the end of it to say, like, don't do that. <laughs> See, this is where it would go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe it wouldn't, though, if I actually did it. Mm-mm. I'm not yeah. letting you control this. <laughs> yeah. So then uh, Peter gets dropped off back at home, and uh, he, he goes into his room, and Aunt May's waiting for him. He's wearing an X-Men shirt. She's like, ah, you're a mutant. No. Get out of my house, you dirty mutant. You're then, in trouble now. Uh, we find out the, re- the rest of the book is Aunt May talking to her therapist. Oh. About what happened with Peter? Yes. Okay. And Aunt May is a therapist? Yes. Have we known this before? No. Nope. Okay. This is the reveal. This is the reveal. Aunt May has a therapist. And she's telling the therapist about how she's like, I unloaded on Peter. <laughs> I let him have it. And Peter, uh, they have this interaction where she's like, where were you? I need to know where you were. And she's like, I'm, I'm done with secrets. And she grabs his backpack and she rips it open. And there's a book inside called The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood. And apparently it is a book that uh, he was read to as a child. And he wanted to read it at the library. And that's his, mm. that's his cover story. Ah. Because his costume was destroyed. He doesn't have a costume right now. Right. But so he, he has the mask. Of one. But we're, we're, yeah, but it's underneath. He, he, the, the mask is in his pocket. The uh. rest of it is underneath his clothes. Right, he doesn't keep so, it in his backpack. But normally it is in his backpack. Uh. So it was actually, there was some tension there. Like, you're like, oh no. Yeah. But they open it up and she see, she's like, oh my God. Like, I screamed in your face. I tore up creation. I broke your door. <laughs> Because you... Well, you broke my door. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't say that, but like... <laughs> I tried to hack into it... your computer. Right. What? what? <laughs> oh, I didn't need to say all that. Mm. Oops. I also terrorized your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah she really did. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I farted in your... <laughs> and I farted you. in your room. So, uh... Now I know where I get it from. <laughs> Aunt May is like talking about how... You know, she's like, well, well, you ditched class. And he's like, I didn't feel like going. Didn't feel like it. Yeah, but she's like, yeah. I... Yeah, I also read all the chapters already. I knew everything that was going to happen in that class. Right. It's yeah. science. Like, like, I'm the only one that pays attention. <laughs> he does say Hell, that. Like, yep. if I wasn't there, I'm willing to bet the teacher would just cancel class. Right? Yeah, no, they cancel class because of this thing, but yes. Uh, but yeah, he, he basically is like, yeah, like, I could teach that class, and I'm tormented by douchebags at school all day. I felt like going to the library and reading. Like a book that I wanted to read right. instead of just sitting in class listening to listening stuff to I already nothing. know. Listening to nothing, yeah. And she's like, God damn it. Because she's, and she, she reveals to her therapist, she's like, I took off like a semester of school and just followed like a band around. <laughs> and this poor kid I'm was a massive take, hypocrite. Uh, yes. <laughs> and so she's talking about how like she is a hypocrite. She's like, my, like, 
Like, my family is gone, my husband is murdered, and then this police captain I barely knew dies. And that's when I decided to see a therapist. Hmm. She's like, I don't understand why, like, I decided to do this. I'm, like, not very, not a, I'm not a very good person. She's, like, worried that she's a bad person because she's, like, mm. my husband is killed. Well, because all these things I, happen around her. Exactly. And mm. that's the thing is that she's, like, the real problem I have is Spider-Man. And the therapist's, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Well, and she's, like, sense. every time that something bad happens in my life, for some reason, Spider-Man shows up. And he shows up around the same time that my husband dies. Mm. And he, I think he lives in my neighborhood because people keep seeing him. And that's the world I live in. Like, I go outside and, like, I, I, or I watch the news and there's been a Spider-Man sighting. Mm -hmm. Like, there's this guy in a costume that runs around and does stuff. And I think he, like, I think he did something with, like, the, the guy who killed my husband. You know, like, I don't... I don't understand what his connection is to my family. Like, but why is he following me around and shit? Yeah, it's really yeah. weird. And I know he's not. That's the thing. It's like, I know he's not following me around, but I feel like he's this symbol of the problems I'm having in my life. And like, my problem isn't with Peter being a good kid who just wants like to be left alone for a few seconds. My problem is that there's this like looming thing mm. over me, this monkey on my back that like is my guilt. It's, it's a whole character study of Aunt May. Because mm -hmm. she's like, I'm not a good person. Like, I, I screamed at my nephew for being a good kid. There's this girl, this orphan girl, whose mother doesn't want her. I flirted with, the, with her father, like, when my husband was murdered. Mm -hmm. like, and, and, and then I took her to my house because I, I don't, like, I'm not a good person who wants to take care of this poor girl. I just want chatter in my house because if I'm alone for a few minutes, I will hear ghosts. Yikes. And the therapist's like, you hear ghosts? She's like, uh-huh, no, 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 no. I don't hear okay, ghosts. Okay, not actually. <laughs> Lady, don't write that down. I don't hear voices in my head. It's just that I'm surrounded by ghosts. He's like, she's like, my, my nephew found this tape of a day I don't remember where I'm surrounded by my ghosts. My dead husband. Like, my dead sister. You know, like, my family is there. Mm. Peter is there. This kid who also was friends with him was dead. You know, like... All these people know me and die. And that's like my real problem is that uh -huh. like I am cursed and I bring about like my problem isn't really Spider-Man. My problem is me and that I am like a harbinger of doom. Yikes. And the therapist is like, okay, mm -mm. it is healthy that you showed interest in another man. You are not a bad person for being human. Uh -huh. You worry about your nephew. That's not being a bad person. And she's also like, I know that my nephew sneaks out at night. Uh. She's like, I check on him every night. And every night his bed is, oh, is, is empty. Yikes. And I know he's sneaking off to be with that girl. Uh. But how can I punish him for that when all he wants is a little happiness? He has no parents. His father figure has been murdered in front of him, basically. Like, right. I can't begrudge him some nookie. <laughs> her, her crescendo of this is that she's worried that if Peter gets close to her mm -hmm. he'll die he'll die yeah and of so the lady so the therapist's like no like I think what you need to do is you need to like stop judging yourself so harshly mm -hmm. you need to recognize your successes and just spend time with your nephew and show him that you love him Oh man, that therapist is gonna feel real bad when Peter Parker dies later in the season. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, we don't get to see her go like, "Oh, I missed a big thing here." Uh, he's Spider Man, and you should have stopped that. But uh, so she says, like, it, "You're you're you're a healthy woman who is trying to like pick up the pieces of your life." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and that's good. Like the Spider Man thing, I'm not sure I understand, but we will get to that. Yeah, yeah. that's a little uh, delusional. Right, a little weird, a little bit. but. You know what? You we'll, know what? We'll, He's weird. And also, your hour's up. <laughs> this is like something we should talk about Elvis. next week. <laughs> At least you're not trying to talk to Elvis. Right. You know what? Except, yeah. Could be worse. I guess. I don't know. A little bit. Again, <laughs> next week. So, <laughs> yeah. Peter... Uh, no time for that now. Peter gets out of, sh out of the shower, and he's met by Aunt May, and he's like, hey. <laughs> and she's like, where's, uh, where's Gwen? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> like, she is out. And he's like... And, and Aunt May goes, why don't we go see a movie? The place that order the, the movie theater that, that gives us the pizza. And I'm like, there's a movie theater in New York that serves pizza? That, that sounds, sounds awesome. awesome. <laughs> I want to Can go. Can I go to that, that right now? Yeah. So she says, let's go. And he's like, but I have homework. She goes, eh, screw it. Like, let's just go, you and me. Yeah. And Peter has the biggest smile on his face. And then he runs out to get ready. 
and she has the biggest smile on her face too. Oh. And the story ends with like this this kind of happy moment. Peter has this really really bad time. Yeah. And then Aunt May's the one who fixes it. Yay. And then they both fart. <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man. I've been holding this in all book. Burn. Burn. Yeah, and they bond over there. Over their mutual, mutual flatulence. Yeah. I mean, if they have pizza at that theater, probably will afterwards. I was gonna say in the next book, like that, it's like the next moment, and like Peter hears someone who needs help. He's like, I, I, gotta, I gotta go. No, they have a great time, and that's that. <laughs> that is that would be. Very typical of Peter Parker. Oh, yeah, big time. Well, that'd be very typical of what a normal writer would think to do with Peter Parker. Yep. Well, I'm going to give him the promise of happiness and then immediately wrench it away from him. Joink. Ah. But you that's okay. responsibility, moron. Because he has to do this. Right. Uh, no, hey, what do you think you're doing, dipshit? Having a nice day with your aunt? Get I your don't costume think so. on and get out there and put your life on the line. <laughs> Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 7. I'll put a link in the description box below this video so you can get a copy. But like, it, it's just it's just another chapter, you know? Yeah. Like, people are like, do the next one. I'm like, some of the next ones are just like, Aunt May goes to see a therapist. It's like, I don't know if this is a good package or not. But, you know, it's a fun story, <laughs> yeah, I guess. It's you know, nice. Well, we ran out of crises. I don't know. Yeah. Not for me. The X-Men show the X-Men. up. Yeah. Which is uh, nice. They don't really the do X-Men anything. And then later, uh, when Mary Jane undoubtedly breaks up with Peter again. Sure. Uh, he hooks up with the, with the Kitty Pride. Yay! And that's cool until she like becomes a complete bad case. Oh no! Oh, but you know nice. what? That's a story for another time. We'll see you guys next time with another episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan, and I'm Ben. Thanks for watching. <laughs>